All right, welcome back to the To Be Better podcast. We are the Chris's. Uh, we do question and answers, emails, and sometimes we simply talk shit. But first, a disclaimer. We are not professionals. No. no <laughs> Everything we that we speak on is opinions derived from experiences and outside knowledge we've gotten from other resources. Mm -hmm. If you get any value or something we said resonates with you, share this. Yes, that's how we grow. <laughs> and if you're not subscribed, why not? Yeah, that's a good question. If you're not subscribed, you're going to miss out on this whole experience. That's the Chris's. That is the Chris's. <laughs> <laughs> Please leave a comment. Your comments are actually super dope to read. Knowing how that we've impacted you or your relationship, it just helps us continue to do what we're doing, and it shows that what we say works sometimes. And to submit a question or just to email us and say how we've helped or maybe constructive criticism, email us at tobebetterco at gmail.com. The number two. The number two. Emails will be read anonymously on this podcast, unless specified otherwise by the sender. So if you don't want us to put your story out there, tell us that. Correct. If you're going to send emails, please be as detailed as possible. If you give us a one-sided email about how your partner is the problem, that is all we will address. Yeah, you will get a one-sided reply. Yes. Nobody is perfect. Take accountability. Everybody can grow. Ooh, preach. And we are giving unbiased, honest opinions. We are not yes men. So if you submit something to us, be prepared for an answer that you might not like getting. But we are going to give you a very honest outside perspective. Is that the full disclaimer? Yeah. Now to the episode. I really enjoy that. I'm really vibing over here like... <laughs> It, it, every once in a while, you find gems on on SoundClouds or not SoundCloud, but uh, Epidemic Sound. Yeah. Not sponsored by, just paid for service. Mm -hmm. um, so we are doing episode five. Holy shit! That's five crazy. five weeks we've been doing this, and in the five weeks we've upgraded equipment. Yeah, we've created the Patreon, which is doing really well for three days. Blows blows my mind, my mind dude. Babe. Um, I've jumped thirty thousand subscribers on TikTok. Crazy in that, in that like last two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, you're up to like one eighty now. Yeah, I'm upset. 183. I'm coming for you. Oh, I know. Uh, You're gonna pass me. I've know. gotten super lax with my TikTok because I don't want to deal with the idiocracy anymore. Yeah, no, it's difficult. That um, so that kind of kind of leads into what we're gonna be talking about today. So, for those of you who don't know, I I am leaving the disclaimer up because mm -hmm. I need to leave the disclaimer, which we actually need to re-record. Um, Why? Because it's changed. We are you know we're doing a lot of Patreon stuff now, mm -hmm. and like we are doing exclusive content, and there's things that are not relevant to that anymore. So we may need to. To reevaluate our little disclaimer at the beginning of this. Okay. Um, but I am Chris. She is Chris. We are the Chris's. Um, that was, I think, is in the disclaimer. I yes, don't remember, but I feel is. like I need to say that again. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am C H Chris. K H R Y S. There you go. So that when you guys see the emails, yeah. you know who to address it to if you want to talk to one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, most of you have that knocked down to a science. Um, all right. Well, then let's let's just jump into the emails. Um, yeah. You know, it would be really cool, and I know it won't happen. Hmm. But if Andy Frasilla ever happens to see this and would like to sponsor our podcast, <laughs> you know, First Form Energy Drinks. I love First Form. I would kill for that kind of sponsorship. I, you know, I, it's not like I spend five or $600 every six weeks on shit from them. No, who does that? I'll just say you're fibbing because we do. <laughs> <laughs> I like the workout shirts that I got from oh, them. Oh, man, their clothes are comfortable. Oh, yeah. Like, and, and you know, I, I kind of pride myself on our... our shop clothes right it's not the same and 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 there's no tag on it so i can't even figure <sighs> out like what brand of shirt it is because i would spend the extra money oh, yeah. for it hmm. all right so first email this is someone who has emailed us prior but all details weren't there so this is like that final comprised one so she said i had sent an email prior but i feel like i didn't explain very well and did not proofread my email and i apologize she said my apologies but my brain just my boyfriend is 33 and I am 32. We have been together since March of 2012. We have an eight-year-old nonverbal autistic son. That's rough. That is very rough. My son, he was born at uh, 27 weeks. He was two pounds and nine ounces when he was born. And the first thing the doctor told me was that the likelihood of him being autistic and nonverbal is high and him having um, cerebral palsy was high. So... He didn't start speaking until he was like two and a half years old. I was fully convinced that my son was going to be nonverbal for the rest of his life. No. So I, I can't imagine like actually 
having to live that and I don't know if he knows sign language or if he's able to communicate at all. I know there's some kids that just grunt. Yeah. Well, we, we have people in our life who have a nonverbal, I right. think six year old. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I'm not going to get into that. It's not our personal life, but right. I, you know, seeing them with him, that's very much a struggle. Yeah. It takes a lot of patience. Mm-hmm. Like you, you have to be a saint to be able to be as understanding and calm and right. not like skips that surface frustration. Like you keep all that internally. I respect people who aren't shitty to kids who are on the spectrum or whatever is going on. Yeah. Hey, can we pause this for a minute? Um, I, and I'm not saying like pause the whole podcast, mm-hmm. but um, I want to give a shout out to AJ. Yeah. I, I feel like it's necessary. I mean, it, we, we, we got somebody that reached out for those of you who aren't caught up. Mm-hmm. Um, we got kind of an intern apprentice thing going on right now with somebody who reached out to us and started doing a whole lot of work for us and is not taking payment. Mm-hmm. And it, if I can't do anything else other than say thank you on the podcast for now, like that's, I feel it's necessary. Yeah. The last email that we're going to read today, mm-hmm. um, he, he cleaned up a lot to make it more cohesive for us. Oh, that's so dope. Um, and it, if that goes over really well on the mm-hmm. podcast, that's going to be something he's going to be doing a lot for us moving forward. And I just, I felt the need to address yeah. that. And I should have done it when we opened and I forgot. Well, so. I, I also want to say thank you for cleaning that email up because reading emails and, yeah. you know, we're busy, so we don't really have the time to sit down and type things up and clean things up. Right. So I, the fact that he's going out of his way just to help us to have like a cleaner podcast. I didn't realize how much time this was going to take up. Yeah. I, I really didn't. Like when we started doing this, it was because TikToks take a few minutes. Mm-hmm. On Thursdays, we record for seven or eight hours. This is yeah. a full-time job on Thursdays. It, it, it's exhausting and it's it, fun. I mean, we're not just doing it on Thursdays though. We're recording three or four hours right. every other day to keep up content right. to make well, sure we have stuff to post. It's going to slow down, especially yeah. as we move in more onto Patreon. Mm-hmm. Um, I, don't, I don't expect to post to YouTube every single day. But we did get ahead. Like we have content coming out tomorrow that we we recorded mm-hmm. previously, yeah. and then we the other things that should have went on YouTube went to Patreon already. So we are we are doing the thing, and it's mm-hmm. going to continue. But if it got to the point where we could do this every day, I would love that. That would be amazing if this yeah. became like a you know a hundred thousand dollar a month mm-hmm. ordeal because of the. I mean, you know, obviously Joe Rogan and those guys are making a killing. I don't expect to get to that level. I don't know if I would want to get to that level. I, I do not want to get to that level. But I, I have a. It's almost of a like a sinking feeling. Yeah. Like I I, I really feel like we're gonna pop off. Well. And having AJ wanting to like help us with this, and he has I can't recall his name, but it's Joe Grogan's producer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Like he has aspirations to be that dude. Like this guy sounds very knowledgeable on yeah. everything that he, comes with us. He's doing the work. He's doing he's doing more back end work yeah. than I I was willing to do. I wasn't willing to do it. And when he was like, you need to do this and you do that. And I'm like, yeah, I really don't. Cause I don't fucking care enough to do that. I don't want right. to. This is somebody who is really thinking we're going to pop off. Yep. I yep. just think that's dope. My boyfriend is 33. I am 32. We've been together since March of 2012, eight year old nonverbal autistic son. My boyfriend works full time and I work part time. I take care of our son. Also do the household chores, cook and do laundry. We both pay rent. So his only responsibilities are paying his half of the rent and the phone bill. Okay, so I'm going to pause on that. He works full-time, you work part-time, but he's only paying rent and a phone bill. Well, it depends on what the rent is. Right, but what you about know. like utilities? Are utilities included in the rent? Well, no, if he's paying the rent and the he's cell phone bill. He's paying half of the and, rent. Oh, is it half? Yeah, okay. they split the rent. Well, that's a problem. And I can't see the email. I have a pop-up on my window that won't go away. <laughs> right. It, it's working. I'm, I'm working on it. But my, oh wait, my computer's not responding now. Oh, Super. Fantastic. <laughs> Yep, so he pays half the rent and he pays the phone bill. Okay. So if utilities are not being spent split evenly, right. that doesn't make sense to me. Why is why are you working a part-time job to take on more of the financial responsibilities, right. especially if you guys are married? That like, is, that did it say? No, they're not married. They've been together since March of 2012. I mean, at this point, they might as well be. They yeah, got an eight-year-old years. autistic son together mm-hmm. and they're they're living that married life. Right. But yeah, that I mean, that's a problem. Um, she takes care of her son, does the household chores, cooks, mm-hmm. and do laundry. We both pay rent. So his only responsibilities financially is his half of the rent and the phone bill. Yeah, that's that's not an equal share of life, right. especially if he's working full time. Where's the rest of the money going? Mm-hmm. He does not help take care of our son. He doesn't clean, doesn't take out the trash, clean the yard, and so on. I am also responsible for filling up my gas tank or any other car issues. Fucking scrub. I hate that. I hate that so much. I don't care how you guys Mm -hmm. feel about this. 
I've said it a thousand times. Men, it is your fucking duty to make sure that your woman's cars are taken care of. In the event that your woman has to go to a mechanic or do anything mechanic-related, there's a strong possibility, unless she's going to somebody very reputable, that she's going to get ripped off. They're going to make right. her pay for a whole bunch of shit she doesn't need, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Fucking stop it. Or she's going to go to a gas station, have to fill the gas tank up, and do all that shit by herself and get fucking harassed by people at the gas station because you're not there doing your job. Hmm. I fucking hate that so much. That reminds me my car needs gas. I got you. <laughs> Why did I, I'm sweating now? Like that instantly frustrates me. It's, it's because that's little boy shit. <laughs> no, it's because I've seen people try to grab you at a gas station. Yeah. I, I've seen people start to engage you until they realize that I was with you and then like sidestep. Right. And I have seen people get uncomfortably close to our vehicle to try to get near you to say shit, even though I've been there. I understand the gas station threat differently now than I did before because hearing it is one thing, seeing it is another. When mm-hmm. you live in experience, it changes your view of things. It frustrates me. I mean, I guess it's all there is to that. He expects sex. We have not had sex in almost a year because I am just drained and is not attractive when someone who wants to drink and never communicate. Oh, and it's not attractive when someone who when somebody wants to drink and never communicate and his attitude is horrible. Pause. So. I, I wouldn't want to have sex with them either. Right. Could you imagine me coming home, alcohol no. in the breath, stinking fucking shitty attitude going, come on, babe, put out. <laughs> right. That's not a thing. And I would like to point out that when you have stretched yourself extremely thin mm-hmm. with a, an eight-year-old autistic nonverbal child doing all of the housework and working a part-time job and you're not having the help that you need, you don't get a break. When you don't get a break, you have no energy. When you have Mm -hmm. no energy, you have no energy for anything, including intimacy. Yeah, she sounds like a single mom with a roommate. Right, it's exactly what it sounds like. You can't, if you can't leave enough in the tank to provide an intimacy with your partner, Mm -hmm. you will absolutely become roommates. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're male or female taking on those roles. When there's nothing left in the tank, there's nothing left in the tank, Mm -hmm. period. People need to, to, to realize that you need to have two or three things, four or five things, 10 things a day that are small victories, mm-hmm. things that make you feel good about yourself, that give you that little bit of pep, a little bit of, I, I did the thing, yeah. a little bit of fun, so that at the end of the night when you're exhausted, you feel like you accomplished something throughout the day, you have a couple of moments where you smiled and things were good, not... The kid was was screaming all day because of whatever. Our fucking house didn't get clean because I was dealing with this over here. I'm mm-hmm. dealing with bills on top of that. He, he doesn't take care of the yard, doesn't take care of the trash, and now she's doing all of that shit as well. Right. Or having to mm-hmm. find somebody else to come and do these things and then having to deal with them on top of negotiating payment and making sure they're paid. Do you see how, like, yeah. not obviously you do, but the people who are listening, there's mm-hmm. a, a, a constant ebb and flow in all of this, and he's sitting around doing nothing. living the fucking dream where he's going to get to just drink and hang out all day while she's fucking handling everything. Mm-hmm. This is that man boy shit. Right. I'm so fucking glad that we have what we have. Me fucking too. You know, I want to touch on before we continue in the email, you said like 10 little victories throughout the day that just make you happy or make you feel good about yourself. I do that constantly. It's huge. I made a TikTok last night and people really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I was stoned sitting on the couch watching Bar Rescue eating shredded cheese out of a bowl. (laughs) In that moment, I was living my best life. Like I was so happy to be existing and like life is stressful. So like little moments like that where I'm like, oh, I could be sex trafficked and I could be living a really awful life, but instead I'm sitting on my couch in air conditioning, eating shredded cheese out of a bowl like it's cereal. (laughs) It's the small things. (laughs) Shredded cheese out of the bowl like it's cereal. It makes me so happy. And like this morning I was editing photos that we took yesterday. We took these photos yesterday. It's not even my present reality. Right. And I'm flipping through these photos and those little derpy bird faces make me so happy. You even walked over and I was like, it just makes me happy. And I'm fucking smiling idiocracy. Those those small victories can be other things as well, though, like your general health. This right. morning when we got up, I, I got up at 6.30 and imi- immediately started res- responding and going back and forth with AJ. Mm-hmm. This fucking kid is on his game. Yeah. He, he I want to this- clarify. He, you say kid, but he's in his 30s. Everybody's a kid to me, unless right. you're older than me, and then you're my elder. So it's right. it's, 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 a, it's not a disrespect thing. I, I know. I just want to clarify. Okay. It's not like a 16-year-old yeah, no, 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 helping No, us. he's a full-grown adult, yeah. military veteran, the mm-hmm. whole nine. Um. But it's one of those things that I got up and immediately started dealing with that. I didn't hit social media this morning until eight o'clock. Yeah. Two and a half hours of not of no social. Mm-hmm. Um, he's so on top of shit that he recognized that our AdSense didn't get approved. Oh, holy and shit. And messaged me and was like, bro, your AdSense didn't get approved. You need to take care of that. I was dealing with it, mm-hmm. but he caught it. Like, um, so the first two and a half hours this morning, I wasn't doing anything. And we train at eight 
Yeah. So by the time we walked out to the gym, I'm like, I don't want to do this. My mm-hmm. my brain was not in workout mode. Right. And you were like, I do. Let's go. Come on. I, you know. And we did it. And we had a decent little workout. And it was like 45 minutes. It mm-hmm. wasn't a big deal. Um, we have a gym on our property, so we literally just have to walk yeah, one we building have an over. Gym. So, um, <laughs> but that 45 minutes, because we're not driving anywhere, saves us a half hour to an hour of time in the morning, and I'm able to answer emails and do shit while we're out there. Mm-hmm. But that victory for me today so far was the gym because I didn't want to do it. If I was by myself today and I didn't have you here, I would have been like, hey, bro, I don't feel like training. I'd text Sean and be like, I don't, I don't want to do this today because I need. there's other shit that I need to be taking care right. of. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's going to play into a video that we're going to make later for YouTube uh, in terms of hyper fixation. But yeah. um, the other small victory that I've had so far for the day is that I ordered a stream deck because I have the capture card coming tomorrow. Mm-hmm. The stream deck will be delivered today. And once all of this gets running through OBS, I can just push buttons to change camera angles. Yeah. So if you're talking, I can go to your camera. If I'm talking, I can go to my camera. And That's going to make editing so much easier oh, for you. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's crazy how much money we've put into this right. and like how, how far this is going. Mm-hmm. I really think that by the end of the month, I want couches in here and to have a better I would love setup. I that. That would be so much more... Oh. I can be wrapped up in a blanket. Yeah. And just comfy. I just don't know how it's going to work because we have our tables and like this is very functional. Right. And I do have another camera that I want to put over to the side so that I can hit both of us at the same time. Mm-hmm. So that I you know, if we're both having a quick back and forth, I can go to that camera. And right. if I'm gonna have a diatribe of, of nonsense, I can go to mine and then yours while you're reading emails and the more camera switches, the better it is for people's brains. Yeah. Yeah. I like hearing your wins of the day. That makes me happy. There, I mean, and it's it's 10 o'clock. Right. So it's not like we're very far behind yeah. on the day. You know what I mean? And we had a great breakfast. That was good. Oh, so good. Oh, I, I just want to throw in. You asked me what I wanted to eat this morning and I told you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wild. Be jealous, men, because you know your woman don't do that shit. <laughs> it felt good to just say what I wanted. Yeah, it's easy. And you were like, okay. Yeah, I don't want to think about it. <laughs> That's great. I have enough decisions I have to make every day. Last right. thing I need to think about is keeping myself alive. <laughs> I'll do that for you. I got you. He comes home after work and goes straight in the room to play video games or stays out at the bars with his coworkers till the bar closes. Damn, it's Fuck like I, no. it, it's like I just said something about video games. And it was the very next sentence. <laughs> I work from home and he gets, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, you don't need to be sorry. I just, I don't, I guess because I've had a problem with drinking and I did the bar thing when I was real young. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I can't imagine not coming home after work. Right. Especially with children at home. Like, I got to be honest, though, um, and I'm going to catch flack for this. I, I don't care. Men will never love their, their kids the way women do. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that we don't love our kids because we absolutely love our children. But there is an emotional bond from you carrying your kid that men will never understand. I, would, I wouldn't even say it's just from me carrying my children. Women are just more inclined to be emotionally well, women attached are emotion- to things. Right. But every time I say that, there's always some fucking weird dude in a comment going, you're wrong. I love my kids unconditionally. And I'm not saying that. I'm right. saying that it's the just bond a different is attachment. different. Yeah. Um, but because they have an eight-year-old nonverbal kid, not saying that he doesn't love his child, mm-hmm. but in the event that he goes home and goes right into a room and plays video game, ignoring the child or staying out at a bar all night with his coworkers until the bar closes at two o'clock in the morning and then coming home drunk, he's negating that entire aspect of his life. That could be a problem for him and he just doesn't want to admit it. Yeah. It's a shitty thing to say. It is a very shitty thought to have, but I mean, people are shit. So yeah. I, I, you know, I always think the worst of everyone. I work from home and he gets very loud while playing video games and I tell him to lower it down and he refuses to. He gets drunk to the point to where he wants to yell and break things, waking your son up. I know that one of the issues on my part is my nagging, which I'm trying to work on. And I know that not having sex is an issue, but it's very frustrating feeling like I'm doing almost everything by myself. I've tried showing him your YouTube content and he refuses. I've even asked him about couples therapy and he says no. I know for a fact that I need therapy, therapy for myself. He always tells me if you don't like it, you can leave. Obviously, he's not willing to he's not willing to change. All I can do is my part to try to be a better person overall and try changing myself. I just don't know what to do anymore. Thank you for taking your time to read this. Y'all's content has been a big eye opener. He always tells me if I don't like it, I can leave. Mm. He doesn't want you there. That's it. You're a convenience to him or a comfort. There's nothing more there. Or just a routine. Right. Yeah. You you know, you're you a comfort. Mm-hmm. We, we have this life together and we're making the bills meet and, and I get to live this life. And <coughs> whether you're here or you're not here, whether you're here or you're not here doesn't matter to me. So if you don't like it, leave. I can find somebody else who gives a shit. 
That, that's what I that's what I took from that sentence. I think that boy needs a better father I, I think, or a better parental figure. I think a lot of things. I, I think first and foremost, um, <coughs> yeah, another one, I'll mute it. No, I'm okay. Good. Um, I, I think first and foremost, when it comes down to it, um, do your therapy. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Do, do your, everything do you your can therapy. to grow as a person. Um, him refusing to do that and refusing to watch the videos and refusing to acknowledge any type of change means he's not willing. He, he doesn't see anything wrong with what he's doing. And unless he's able to see what, what, what? That just frustrates me. Oh, okay. Like, how do you think you're this big almighty person when your wife is absolutely miserable? You're not giving her any attention. You're going to bars until two o'clock in the morning. Like you're this single bachelor. I, 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 not, I fully acknowledge that sometimes people just don't give a shit. Right. It, like that's a fact. Yeah. If that's the case, though, just say it. Right. Like, don't be a coward and mask behind things and beat around the bush and say, well, if you don't want to be here, you can leave. How about you say, I'm not happy anymore and I don't want to be here. Right. But how would that work out for him in the event that she leaves? He's only paying half the rent and the cell phones, spending mm-hmm. the rest of the money going to the bar. He doesn't He doesn't take care of the kid at all. In right. the event that she leaves and has to pay child support with an autistic child, he's now responsible for medical bills in, in whatever state he's in. That mm-hmm. may not be the case, but in Florida, you have to pay the medical as the dad. It's court ordered. The medical goes to the dad. Right. So he'll have to provide insurance which for an eight-year-old nonverbal autistic child is going to be high. Mm -hmm. Um, He's going to have to pay child support. I don't know if they're actually married or or not. And if they're not married, he won't have to pay alimony, but he's going to get hit with all that money. Mm -hmm. And if he can barely take care of his his side of shit now, how is that going to work when he's got to pay out all this money? Right. There's a, in that that's a fear. It could be maybe he fears that if they leave, he's going to owe them a bunch of shit or he's not going to be able to make ends meet. He's not going to be able to live his life. That, you know, I devil devil's advocate everything. I'm not saying that this is the case. I'm just saying that, you know, Mm-hmm. I, I think people are shitty people and right. I'm going to look at everything from the worst case scenario. And, you know, it's also the kind of thing where she has a nonverbal autistic son. Yeah. Like he, he can't go to a regular public school. Nope. How is she going to make ends meet on her own? Yeah. You know, if this is a kind of thing where he, it, it, it really sounds like he doesn't give a fuck to be a better person. Right. No, it absolutely sounds like that. So it, it's not out of the realm of possibility to where you guys can just remain roommates you know, you guys are paying your end of rent, whatever's going on. And then like, if you want to see other people, that needs to be conversation that needs to be had. It is very hard being a single mother of a special needs child. Right. When you got to think of the routine for the autistic child as well, right? because a lot of autistic children thrive on routine. Mm -hmm. So right now, being that the dad is going to the bars or playing video games and not really present Mm -hmm. when he is there, I'm sure that it creates some sort of emotional conflict with the child because his routine is getting disrupted. It's also... This man is yelling and throwing things and right. breaking things. Right. Like, I, 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 dude, this sucks. This really sucks. I um, I you know, I understand that people play video games as a hobby, mm-hmm. and I know a lot of people who are who are adults. I have a friend of mine that works in tech that is a a a big deal mm-hmm. at one of where he works. I'm not going to throw him under the bus, but yeah. Um, and I know that he makes more than six figures a year doing what he's doing, mm-hmm. and I know that he plays video games because I've played video games with him. Right, but he will stop what he's doing and engage with his child and engage with his woman mm-hmm. and like only spend two hours playing video games instead of all night. And it'll be like Tuesday. Right. Not, like that's his dedicated night to. Right. And it's, it's the only time that he gets to, to play the video games and decompress and hang out with his friends and it's scheduled. And I bet it's uninterrupted too. Um, most of the time she does not interrupt him. Um, <laughs> we were playing, <laughs> we were playing destiny, the first destiny when it came out yeah. and um, she came home and uh, I think she hit her head on the counter and like, or on like a cabinet corner or something. And I hear blood curdling scream. And uh, I don't know where his computer was at the time in yeah. comparison, but it sounded like she was screaming into his microphone and she's having a full meltdown. He's like, I got to go. I'll be right back. And he put his headphone down and I can hear everything oh, wow. that's happening in the background. She hit her head on the cabinet. She had a really bad day at work. Full meltdown. He comes back to the computer and he's laughing his ass off because she's screaming and cursing about everything. She literally just hit her head on the corner of the cabinet, but like was in the kitchen on the floor fucking melting down. I don't mean to laugh. I've had moments like that. But you know who I'm talking about. So hearing her do that, like that's not who she is as a person. And he got back on laughing. He's like, I I have to go, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Because it comes down to it. It it is still your family first. You know what I mean? You have to put your wife as a priority or your Mm -hmm. woman as a priority. This doesn't sound like there's a priority here other than I want to drink and play video games. Right. If this is the kind of thing that she wants to try to make it work, I would have, I I don't know if there's any grandparents in the picture, if there's any aunts or uncles, if there's somebody that that child 
is familiar with, they feel safe with. Have a spend the night at grandma's house. Yeah. Something. Y'all need to have a sit down in depth conversation and talk about what you want going forward because what you have now is not working. While sober. While sober. And you know, if it's the kind of thing where he's like, well, I'm going to go out and drink, say, I-, I think we need to have a conversation. You know, our son's not going to be here tonight. We really need to figure out what we're doing. And if he says, well, I'm going to go drinking anyway, that that's your answer. Yeah. You don't, there's nothing else to be said. He's told you everything right. at that point. And if he's like, if he's on board with it and he does want to have that conversation, I would start it with, I don't recall if she said things were good prior to the child or not, but I would say, no, nope, things, things have changed. I don't know if you are unhappy with me. I don't know if you're frustrated that our son can't speak. I don't know if you're unhappy at work. Like what, what is happening? Because I don't feel connected to you anymore. Right. I don't feel like we're in a relationship anymore. What can we do to remedy the situation? Do you need like designated nights to go out and hang out with the boys? And if he says yes, you're not staying out until two o'clock in the morning anymore. Right. And if he's not okay with that boundary, that's it. If he's not willing to compromise and take a step back and be like, okay, this is why I'm unhappy. These are the steps that we can take. And it's logical, rational steps, not you have to allow me to go out five nights a week to party and whatnot. That shows initiative. Like he's realizing that he, you're right. It's not working, Right. but he wants it to. <sighs> So she said in here that uh, he gets drunk to the point where he wants to steal and break things. Mm-hmm. That leads to other DV happening, right. especially if, if they're drunk to that point that they're starting to break shit. Mm-hmm. It may not be in him as a person to physically harm you, um, but I actually see that as a sign of abuse, right. uh, especially when there's a child involved. She also said the, um, the issues on her part is her nagging, which she's trying to work on, and the sex issue is frustrating. So the nagging situation, ways that you can deal with that is to, instead of harping, just give him gentle nudges. Mm -hmm. Like if if you need him to take the trash out and he doesn't, just let it sit until he does it. And if he doesn't do it and you guys go to bed, be like, babe, I I forgot. Did you take the trash out earlier like I asked you to? And Mm -hmm. if he's like, no, I'll do it in the morning. It doesn't get done in the morning. Just leave it. Let it pile up for a little while. You know, it's kind of petty it cr- could create bugs and that would be a problem for mm-hmm. me. But if, if it goes on another day without it, be like, Hey, you know, I've asked you and even reminded you to take the trash out and you didn't. So now it's piling up in there and there's bugs and it's getting gross in the house. Can you please take care of that? Um, so that, I mean, that's one way to do it because you're not nagging. You're not harping on them. You're just trying to be gentle with the reminders. The other things that you can do is to give the end result you want instead of the details on how you want to get there. Mm-hmm. So like, um, I'm trying to think of an example that's relevant to what she said, but I, I really don't, you know, really could come down to like, I would like you to play less video games. I would like to spend more time with you. And, and in doing that, like, you know, maybe a little bit less video games. Yeah. Hit him with that. I miss you. Right. But in doing the less video game things, you're not telling him like, Hey, I don't want you playing video games every night of the week. You're on there five nights, five hours mm-hmm. at a time. Like you're just giving him the opportunity to correct things of his own own accord versus trying to dictate his life. And, and when people feel like you're trying to control them and dictate the life, you're looked at as a nagging mom. So um, the end result is more pertinent to, uh, to men most of the time mm-hmm. than hearing the hows and the wants. Just, you know, give us what you want us to do and let us work on it. I, I don't think he will work on it. From what, what I'm, I'm reading, it sounds like he just wants to do what he wants to do. It doesn't give a shit otherwise. Mm-hmm. That um, if you don't like it, you can leave comment. That, I mean, that's everything you need. That, that, as far as I'm concerned, that tells you everything that you need to know. But, you know, I, I, I fully would never beg somebody to stay. I wouldn't like in in the event that um, I feel like I'm the problem, I'm not chasing somebody. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, in in a scenario where you and I were arguing, that would be the last thing I ever said. I'm not trying to to push you out the door. I'm not, we're not having conversations like that period because I'm not trying to cement those thoughts into your your mindset. In the event that you were like, I'm leaving, I'd be like, okay, I'm not going to beg you to stay. If you don't want to be here, I don't want you here. Mm -hmm. Like I want you to be happy and I want you to be where you want to be. But I would never fucking tell you. If you don't like it, get out. So there was one time you said that to me. No. Mm-hmm. When we were new? Uh, I would say we were probably like three or four months into it. That's probably why. And you said that to me. And I thought for a split second, like, what the fuck would you do if I did? Yeah. And a few days after that conversation, you pulled me aside and you were like, I'm sorry that I said that. Yeah. I don't remember the scenario right. at all. I was probably going through an episode. Yeah. But Not that that makes it right. Right, but still, you you recognize that you said that, and you were like, I don't want to say that to you. Right. So It makes me feel like shit. 
I'm sorry. I mean, it's, it's not your fault. Well, if this, I said it, I said it. Well, but. this is me showing a correction in it. You realize what you said and the impact of those words. Right. And you now know going forward, you don't want to say that to me. Because no matter what we're going through, like that's not an option for us. Right. Yeah, I don't want that to be an option. I don't want right. that to be a thought or a, a scenario. I, I don't want that to be on the table at mm. all. Like that's not how we're going to last until right. we're old and dead. I think that's also a shine of your, a sign of your own growth. Yeah, I mean, cause because I, I, I've heard you say that to other people. Well, I'll tell somebody else to kick rocks right. quick as fuck. Like I'm going to live my yeah. life, whether you like it or not. I don't give a shit if you're in it or not. Like I don't owe anyone anything. Right. But you and I have made a decision that we are going to do this until the end, mm -hmm. and I want to try to make sure that I'm taking every avenue I can to not sabotage that. And right. and like my BPD does sometimes self destruct. And I tell you, like I've, I've woken up and be like, I'm in full self-destruct mode. Like, and those are days that, that are dangerous for me mm -hmm. because I will make really brash decisions and like, I will do things that I are very out of character. And I, when I know that I'm going through that, I tend to not go out. I tend not to do shit. I tend to not really engage with my employees or my managers. I tend to kind of just sit at the house and watch TV because in the event that somebody says wrong, something wrong, I'm going to fly off the handle or, um, if I have to make a business decision when I'm in that mode, I'm not making it on a logical brain. I'm making it on an emotional brain. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't make decisions when I'm like that. Right. So I don't even remember why I got to that topic or why it went yeah. that far. Because he said that, you know, if you don't like it, leave. Yeah. And you're explaining how your BPD expect, um, affects you. Right. But the reason I brought up that you said it prior, but you haven't said it since, it is a choice on oh, how you verbalize is. your things. So if he's saying that and he tries to backpedal and says, well, I do want you here, but if you don't want to be, no, that's not what you're saying. Right. You're saying leave. I'm not going to ask you to stay. I'm not going to try to change things and make things easier for you. If you don't like who I am as a human being, fuck right. off. Accept it or go. Right. I really don't have much more to say on the email. It's a really shitty position to be in. I hate that there are people out there who can just have a I don't care attitude. Yeah. Especially towards the people that they claim to love. And it's not okay. So before we got, there's like, I need to put my phone on. Do not disturb, I think. Um, I was going to say before your phone rang that things are not 50 50 in a relationship. Right. They're 100 and 100. Mm -hmm. And that 100% sometimes doesn't look like 100%. There are days that my 100% effort is only going to look like 20%. Mm -hmm. And there are days that my 100% is going to look like I've, I've, I've given everything and I'm coming home with bloody feet because I'm just running crazy trying to get shit done. Mm -hmm. That's going to shift based off of my mental health. It's going to shift off of what I've got going on in the world. It's going to shift off of our money on the podcast, what's going on in the other businesses, employees. Everything that comes into my life factors into what I'm able to give in the home. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a lot, sometimes it's not, but we make that work. And on those days that I'm only able to give 20%, you're the other 80. This is not that. There's no balance here. And it, it, it's like they're two separate people. Right. <clears throat> Living as roommates. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm I'm fully aware that you and I are we're we're independent of each other. Right. You know, we, we're not codependent. With the way that our relationship is set up, <clears throat> I don't view I'm going to go do this. It's we are going to go do this. Right. Well, we do do, um, well, we do, do, <laughs> we do, um, <laughs> child, we do everything together anyways. Right. We very rarely are separated because we do enjoy each other's company mm -hmm. and I want you around. And in the event that I can go and do those things with you, I'm going to. Right. What? Are you laughing at me because I said do do and laughed at myself? No, I just think you're cute. Okay. What, what I was meaning by that is when it comes to household chores, there are things that are designated for you to do and there's things that I'm designated to do. But us doing those things together creates a harmony in the home. Absolutely. This this is the only way I can think to describe this of. Everybody's mind works differently, right? In my mind, hearing this email, like in our household, when I think of our home, I hear like beautiful music and harmony and shit playing. My mind's crazy. Yeah. I hear this email and I'm putting myself in her shoes and it just sounds like fucking cat noises on a violin. That's not a pleasant sound. It's not. We, um, you know, we do have our, our jobs inside of the house and we, we actively do those, but you know, we also help each other in those jobs because they got to get done mm -hmm. and knowing that they've got to get done allows us to have a lot of free time because we work in unison to get them accomplished. Right. I get emails or we get emails and I get comments constantly about how busy women are that are stay-at-home moms and how they've got very little time and how men are always playing video games or out with their friends or doing whatever it is that they're doing. And I don't get emails where like, you know, we get to watch TV for two or three hours a night or we mm -hmm. go on date nights. Like we don't see those. 
And I couldn't imagine not having the time that I have with you because we have a lot of downtime together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we have the intimacy that we have and we have the stupid conversations and we can laugh and snort and like be children because we're able to just decompress and have that time together. Well, we make a point to have that time together. Right, It's important. You know, we're not seeing that from a lot of people. Right. It's because we make each other a priority. Our time management is dope as fuck. Mm -hmm. You know, I have the house cleaning down to a science. You take care of everything you take care of in the morning. So that way we both make sure by about two or three o'clock we're free. Yeah. You know, we start our days early. We're up at like six or something. Yeah. Sometimes way earlier. than Yeah. So at two or three o'clock when we're both done with our days, you have the option. You can go do whatever you want to do. Right. You could go take photos by yourself. You can go hang out with whoever you want to hang out with. You could go see a movie by yourself, whatever you want to do, but you choose to make right time for us. I could go and sit in a park for three hours and look at the sun. You, and have, and shit. you, you are the type of person that could do that. <laughs> I really could. Cause yeah. you know, you've just laid in the driveway staring at the sky oh, in, in the past. So it's so nice. Like hearing the breeze <laughs> and the trees whispering to each other and all these fluffy clouds and the atmosphere. You fucking hippie. I'm not a hippie. I'm just connected to the energies in the universe. And I appreciate small things like the sky is blue, but it's different from the blue that's in the lights in the background. (laughs) That was pretty specific. I know. I say a lot of specific things like how I said last night. (laughs) I sent you a text message. So I get a lot of comments and I get a lot of preach girl. And I appreciate you guys are acknowledging the things I'm saying, like you agree with it. I just, I don't know. Something about that preach girl just doesn't do it for me. Yeah. I hate it. What about (laughs) the here? You dropped your crown. (laughs) (laughs) And I even said in the message, I'm like, I'm not a queen. I'm just someone with logical ideologies and shit. And I spew them on the internet when in reality, all I want to be is a miniature cow in a meadow full of mostly yellow flowers. Specifically yellow flowers. Yeah. I hate the color yellow, but like the yellow and green contrast with the blue sky just does it for me. And I'm a nice ginger fluffy cow. Hell yeah. Those are all colors that contrast well. (sighs) So uh, the person that asked about the meal thing Mm -hmm. is who we just responded to. Okay. So I would like to say um, my meal when I'm dieting versus when I'm not dieting is very different. Mm -hmm. When I'm I'm on a specific meal plan, I will not have anything. I'll I'll weight train and do cardio fasted. Mm -hmm. I have a protein shake that has two scoops of protein, uh, three quarters of a cup of oats, a cup of berries, a triple berry specifically from Publix that are blueberries, strawberries, and raspberries. Um, I do... I'm going to correct you. It's blueberries, blackberries, and raspberries. Right. Well, the organic one is strawberries. Right, but that's not the one we usually use. Okay. Well, that's the one we're using today. Right. We usually use a triple berry one. Okay. So, yeah, whatever you just said. Those are the berries. Uh, A tablespoon of peanut butter, a banana, and a bottle of water with L-glutamine, creatine, Collagen. Um, collagen when, when I was using it to try to get my skin to retract, which I don't think it really helped much. I think that's it. And I put um, uh, Relite, R-E-L-Y-T-E, in mm-hmm. there, which is just basically Himalayan sea salt to help right. hydrate me because I cramp real bad. And that's my first meal of the day post-workout. And then I'll normally do um, one or two whole eggs into um, one cup of egg whites, and that'll be my breakfast. And then I won't have... Um, I, I normally won't really have carbs again for mm-hmm. the rest of the day after that that one meal. So like I'll do that, or and then I'll do eight ounces of chicken three times after that. Or you were doing ten ounces of chicken. At, yeah, well that's because I was trying to gain weight mm. or trying to gain muscle and not not body fat. Um, I, I want to clarify that just what you eat is not what somebody who's like 130 pounds should eat. No, no, you shouldn't. Yeah, I, I eat it, I eat a lot for for trying to lose weight. Like yeah. it's not normally conducive for people, but the way that I train and do cardio, it mm-hmm. works for me. But I do low carbs and low fats. Right. So in your meal plan, I don't remember what you were doing. So I was doing, I also had a shake after working out. So I would do a half cup of oats, two scoops of the protein powder. Um, I would do less berries just because I don't like the texture that mm. changes the way it feels in my mouth. I, I like to have to chew my my yeah. my shake because it's thick. Like you'll ask me a question. It takes me a good 30 seconds to I've swallow that I've seen you chew shit. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> It fills me, though. I would do like a third of a cup of berries. There are times I would add the peanut butter because the peanut butter also changes the texture of it. And then I do a full bottle of water. I want to feel like I'm drinking. I don't know. Yeah. I don't do a full bottle. I do like. I don't want to chew my beverage. 80%. Yeah, well, I I do because I want to thicken my stomach because then I can go a couple, you know, an hour or two without eating. 
I also think it's important to know that when I do have carbs, it's either brown rice or basmati rice because it's the lowest glycemic index. Mm -hmm. um, sweet potatoes, oats, cream of rice. I love cream of rice. I throw some peanut butter in that shit and yeah so filling so mm -hmm. filling i can eat that in the morning with my eggs and i won't have any carbs for the rest of the day and i'm not ever really hungry yeah um <clears throat> and then all my meats are lean when i'm dieting I, i'll stay away from red meat i eat just chicken and fish um which i hate both of yeah so it's really hard to eat it but and I, so at that time when we were doing the chicken and fish you were getting about six ounces and i was doing about four ounces for myself yeah. but there's a massive weight difference between right. you and i well, yeah, but I also lost, I mean, even at that, I, when we were doing that, I, I mm. lost almost 100 pounds in six months. Right. Like, it's not healthy to do that to your body, And I, but I've kept it off. Mm -hmm. I went from 210 to, I'm balanced between 215 and 220, and I'm not really dieting right now. Mm. I'm not even doing cardio. We've done cardio once since the hurricane. Yeah. So, well, we've done it a couple of times, but the place that we walk is just trashed right now. Right. We didn't, I haven't done cardio at all since then. Since we got back from Tennessee, I haven't done cardio once. We've been out to Mayakahatchee twice. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah, since they've reopened it, we've been out there twice. I only remember going once. Wow. We went the first time and you were like talking about how all the trees and stuff. We went oh. out that second time. You're like, it really sucks that the canopy is gone. It's one memory. Yeah. Because it's, it's my brain's off when I'm out there. I'm just yeah. there to get the cardio in. That's crazy how our brains remember shit. Yeah. It's not important to me, so I don't save it. I want to say it's important to me. Or I just I'm don't know why old. it's there. <laughs> Getting into my mid seventies now. Yeah, getting old. Your mid seventies. That's what somebody oh said. Oh my god! They were like somebody on one of the shorts. Were like, I can't believe he said he's only forty two. He looks like he's in his mid seventies. Yeah. I had someone tell me I was eighteen. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Thanks for the compliment. I'm almost thirty. Could you imagine me be thirty five and people are still like you're nineteen? I wish. I <laughs> wish I looked like I was nineteen. Oh, you so wanna, you want to get into the next one? I mean, we, did we really answer her question of what we eat? Well, I mean, I there's my diet's the same. Right. When I'm dieting to lose weight, I eat the same shit over yeah. and over and over again, and it Low works. Low carb, high protein. Yeah, but for you, like when we're doing keto stuff and you're mm -hmm. doing your cooking meals, and I'm not dieting, I've kept my weight off because of the way that you're cooking. Right, it's maintaining. But I don't know anything about any of that. You, yeah, you give me my food and I eat it, and you're like, "Is it good?" And I'm, like, oh, oh, as I'm <laughs> cramming shit in my face. It, it's all keto. It's Low carb, high protein, and some of the recipes I make are high fat, but yeah. it's not high fat like something you shouldn't be eating. It's just right. higher because I'm doing three ounces of cream cheese in it. I like food. Me too. I like it when food tastes good. Your chicken pot pie is the shit. Oh, thank you. I love that. <laughs> That makes me feel really good about myself. And like, I think the only thing that we could do to make that better, but it would add so much more carbs is to put the crust on the top and the bottom instead of just mm. on the top. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. What? No. The it crust is... is the favorite part. Right. But with the crust, y your serving size is only about eight grams of carbs. Right. So if I doubled that, you're getting almost 20 grams of carbs in your one dinner. I know. And it'd be a big fucking bowl too. If oh, you skipped, I love that bread. <laughs> if you skipped your protein shake, I would do that. I wouldn't you. do that. And you're uh, just getting no to one level hell. of bread. <laughs> that that protein shake is the only thing that keeps me from from like yeah. breaking my diet. Because it's it's a thick ass smoothie. Mm -hmm. It's sweet. Banana. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. It's it's like I'm having a cheat meal every day. Mm -hmm. And and realistically, it's it's two of my meals, but mm -hmm. it, I don't know. I, I love my protein shake. Okay. Especially with that axe and sledge elf oh, shit. Ugh. The white spot the hot white hot spice, whatever. Yeah, whatever it is. Tastes like graham crackers. So I'm going to plug myself here real quick. So you mentioned my chicken pot pie. Yeah. Uh, for the people who want to see me make that, go subscribe to our Patreon. Yeah. Are you going to do that this weekend? <laughs> I am. I'm going to cook it on Sunday. I might actually do it tomorrow night. Tomorrow's Friday. That works. It just means I get chicken pot pie this yeah. weekend. <laughs> you going to get to the next one? Yeah. All right. For those of you who do subscribe to the Patreon, I know that I said thank you yesterday in the video that we uploaded exclusively to it. You guys are really helping us drive this channel. Yeah. You're making it. I, it's already worth it for us when people give us the positive feedback. Right. But knowing that people want to support us and help contribute to equipment and setups right. and us being able to go places and do right. shit like... Well, there was things that we did last night based off of the fact that we have the Patreon subscriber base that we have right now. Mm -hmm. And that's paying for Vimeo. Right. Like, because I can, I can put Vimeo content up that can't be shared. Mm -hmm. So once it's there, it's there. You know what I mean? Um, and putting our content on Vimeo is not searchable. So, mm -hmm. like, it's, it's just hidden. Right. Um, 
but it, we have to pay for that. And it's yeah. almost a thousand bucks a year. So having the Patreon subscribers, knowing that we're making the monthly payment just off Patreon makes that worthwhile. So we're not having to pay for it mm -hmm. because we're having to pay for a lot. Right. <laughs> and it's not a bad thing. Right. I, I, you know, I would have done this with or without the support because mm -hmm. I enjoy this and I'm having fun doing it. So right. it's worthwhile to me, but now I know that there's revenue coming in, even if it's minor, we can continue to do shit. And I don't feel bad about it because we are still making it back it's yeah. slowly. I think it op also opens doors for us. Like if we really take off and get a bunch of subscribers, we can start doing like pop-ups. Yeah. It would be kind of cool to do like, um, like if we could get sponsors, like I know that we talked a little bit like mm -hmm. about Till Valhalla Project. Like if they were to send me free t-shirts, I would wear them on all the podcasts. Yeah. Um, and that's not even something that's going to benefit us financially. I think it would just be cool to do. Mm -hmm. But I also know that there are a lot of podcast groups that get reached out to for sponsorships. And I know that there are podcast websites where you can punch your podcast in and they find um, sponsors that align with you for you. Mm -hmm. Right. The problem is, is they don't align. And I, I'm getting emails like, hey, we found 22 new possible sponsorships. And I looked at it and I'm like, I, I'm not. No. Yeah. No, I would rather I would rather sponsor someone for free that I believe in mm -hmm. and just shout them out every time we do a podcast and take someone's money for something that I don't agree with. Right. My integrity means more to me than any of this does. So I agree. So this person sent two separate emails. My husband keeps saying he wants his wife back. We used to be very affectionate and intimate almost every day. When our son was born, who is now two, everything changed. I went through postpartum really bad. And since then, it's just been rough. My husband says he wants a traditional marriage, but never follows through with anything. He tells me he is going to do something, for example, build the end tables I got for Christmas, and they are still sitting in a box. I worry about finances because he forgets to pay things and we have a lot of debt. He says his job is to provide and protect, but he's not doing it. So my question is, how do I bring this up without him feeling like crap? And how do we reconnect when we don't go on dates anymore? We do everything with our son. I am a stay-at-home mom, and I'm trying to take care of everything, and I'm stressed and overwhelmed. Do you want to touch on anything that before I read the next part? Um, yeah, because I don't want to. I don't want to have to go back. Um, I want to win the lottery, hmm. but I don't buy lottery tickets. Right. Yeah. If you if you really want to win the lottery, or you believe that you have the capability of winning the lottery, mm -hmm. or you believe that there's a small percent chance that you're going to win the lottery, you're going to waste that money buying lottery tickets. You're going to gamble. Yeah. If you think <clears throat> that you are capable of being a provider and a protector on even a small level, you're going to step up and try. Mm -hmm. It may take you three months to build those fucking end tables, but you're going to get them built. It may take you a day to get them out of the box and then a couple of days to start putting them together and it may leave a mess, but you're going to do it. The fact that she stays at home by herself and, and is a stay-at-home mom, but they do everything with their son, mm -hmm. means she doesn't get a break. Right. If she doesn't get a break, she's not hitting those small victories that we talked about earlier. She's burnt out. Of mm -hmm. course, there's no intimacy. You're fucking exhausted all the time. Right. Where's your passion for life? Where's the excitement in your day-to-day? -day? If you don't have that, you can't have that intimacy because you're run down. You are doing the same thing over and over and over again like a slave. Right. I, I would have a very big problem with... He forgets to pay things. Yeah. Yeah. That's a problem. Like if you're supposed to be, if you want it traditional and our version of traditional is the man handles the finances and pays all the bills. So the wife doesn't have to stress about it. What is he doing? What is he's not doing that. <laughs> and they have a lot of debt. I feel like where the debt came from is, is an important part. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know their lives. If he's a business owner, there's there's always going to be revol revolving debt right. and things like that. But if this is personal debt that they're yeah. just racking up and being irresponsible with their money, that's a different a different problem. Mm -hmm. It's also the kind of thing, this is making me question because he's forgetting to pay things. Is he spending money? Right. And then there's something left in the bank account when the electric bills do. Are you putting that on a card? Is that why you're in debt? That's a good question. Where is the money going? Right. Is it, the, the next question, that, that line of thought though, is is, is he as the only provider financially or um, the only working mm -hmm. uh, income. He's a financial support. My brain just shut straight off. Yeah. If he's the only person that is providing financially, that's where I was going with that. Mm -hmm. Jeez, that was rough. You um, got there though. It, it, <laughs> I heard um, the, 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 the nuclear bomb radiation thing. Yeah. Going the siren. on in my brain <laughs> as I was trying to think nothing was coming through. Um, if he's the only, only financial um, only person bringing in an income, mm -hmm. does that mean that there's not enough money in the house for you guys to really thrive and you're merely staying afloat? Because if that's the case, you are going to be living off of credit and you're going to be rotating those debts. Mm -hmm. You have to keep in mind that if you're not making enough money to 
pay your credit cards off at the end of the month, off, not make the minimum payment, you are not making enough money to live. Because if you're using your credit cards to, to survive, that 20%, 15%, 27%, if your credit sucks, right. is adding on every single month. And now you're just making the minimum payments and they're getting their interest and that debt is occurring. Mm-hmm. What happens when you run out of credit and all you're doing is making those minimum payments and you can't use those cards anymore and you're, you know, your three or $400 a month credit card payment yeah. is just, <clears throat> it's just debt. You know what I mean? You're going to always owe that money. You're never going to climb out of debt if that's the case. So before I make any points, she adds on, you know, kind of her faults in the relationship. So she says, I do also want to add that I get very stressed out very easily and I often need my husband's help with the kids. My anxiety is through the roof and I'm having a hard time. I know though the debt we occurred is from both of us making bad decisions. Oh, there you go. And I want to do my part to make it easier for my husband as well. He says he doesn't feel appreciated or heard or valued. I don't know what else to do. I'm always telling him and I appreciate him. So I'm going to pause there. You're telling him appreciate him, but your actions show that. Actions speak louder than words. I don't know what else to do. I'm always, oh, I'm, I just want our old life back. He is so caring and loving and I just miss him. I want to tell the entire story. Positive affirmations matter. Right. They help, but it's not enough. Yeah. It, it's not. You have to show mm-hmm. these things. And in the, in the event that um, you're always stressed out and having anxiety and, you know, the debt is both of y'all's fault and you're not doing the things that you need to uh, make his life a little bit easier in that aspect. Right. Um, you're not showing him that is appreciated or valued, especially if when you get the anxiety, you complain and, you know, and you bitch at him and, mm-hmm. you know, you tell me, you know. I mean, obviously, there's nothing on here that says what she may say to him, so I'd be pure speculating at that point, but right. I can't imagine that you're having anxiety and being completely calm. So at the end of the email, she said, I wanted to tell the entire story. I This is not an entire story. Not even close. This I feel like these are bullet points Yeah, that can definitely delve into more things. You say that he's the only provider. Is he working multiple jobs? Is he working 12-hour days? Is he working eight-hour days? Does he get any days off? I feel like that's important because it sounds like both of you are stressed. Yeah, I, I mean, and he's he is says that she needs her, her husband's help with the kids. It, it sounds mm-hmm. like he's helping, so he is trying. It, it's not like he's right. a deadbeat, you know. At least that's what it, it sounds like. When we get e- when we get emails and we don't have like we're always going, it's always going to be one sided. There's not going to ever be a scenario unless mm-hmm. the, the email is written by two people where we're not getting a biased. Because you're only telling the story from your standpoint. Right, from your perspective. So in the, two. Right. So in the event that we had the, the first monster-in-law email that we got that was super long mm-hmm. that you, you're friends with on Instagram, if we had the husband send that email with her and like she told her side, he read it and then told his side, and we read it, we would be able to find some sort of common ground in there. Right. Um, because that's never the case, we always have to just based off of the facts of the email that we've gotten, mm-hmm. that's how we have to address the situation. The fact that she says that, that she needs help from her husband with the kids uh, because her anxiety is through the roof and having a hard time, she doesn't say that he doesn't help, which means he does. Right. So he is trying. And I don't, I don't know. So it sounds like you guys need more money. It sounds like I, I would recommend therapy. She said all of this started because she had postpartum depression. Take, she said it was really bad, and since then it's just been rough. So that's that's on her end. Right. There's nothing he can do to help your postpartum. He can, I don't want to say, like, handle you delicately because that's almost insulting, but he can be more gentle with you. He can be, in moments where you're, like, really going through it, he can recognize it and just step in. Right. But you have to sit down and either get with a therapist or, you know, do YouTube videos on how to cope with postpartum depression and how to deal with the aftermath. There's a lot of self-work that needs to happen there. And I'm saying that as a woman who had postpartum depression for almost two years. So, okay, I'm glad that you said that because I read something the other day that said hormonally postpartum depression can only last for about a year. So in the rare occasion mm-hmm. that it lasts for two years or more, like at that point, I don't believe it's postpartum anymore. I believe it's just depression because yeah. your body regulates your hormones after a year of, of birth. Mm-hmm. So that first year when postpartum is really bad, it's because your hormones are fucked up too. So like there's a compounding problem there. Right. So is it really postpartum after a year or is it just depression now and you haven't been able to recover from that? I don't know these I, things because I don't have, I will never have postpartum depression. So that first year where my hormones were out of whack, I could tell it was my hormones. 
like small things that usually wouldn't set me off were setting me off. Right. Um, I'm an emotional person now. Like if I see a commercial with a kitten and the kitten dies, I'm going to cry. But when I was in my postpartum, I was like breaking down, sobbing, snot coming out of my nose. Like it was intense. Right. It was hormonal. And after that first year, I could kind of tell when my hormones were getting regulated again because I was noticing changes. Right. I could feel the differences. That the second year of it, I think it is kind of a, I just went through all of that. My whole life has changed. I had all of these thoughts while I was in that depression. Now I'm just thinking on those thoughts on repeat. Right. Like I, my body regulated itself, but I didn't regulate my mind. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. But I, but can you actually call that postpartum depression at two years? Because it doesn't sound like it. It sounds like you had postpartum and I, hormonal issues, and then you just never bounced back from it because well, your I mean, life I, had changed so much. I already have depression. Right. I think the postpartum depression worsened my depression. Yeah. Because that postpartum depression put me into a darkness I never thought I would experience. Right. And after that, it, it is very hard to climb out of that hole. I would say the depression I had could have been a byproduct of the hormonal changes that I went through in my body trying to stabilize and regulate. I, I wouldn't say it's postpartum because the postpartum is the hormonal right. aspect. That's of what it. I was getting at. I just didn't right. want to, you know, I didn't want to invalidate your, your thought process there. I was just yeah. trying to talk about it, I guess. I, I would say the depression after the postpartum is a byproduct, byproduct of everything that I went through. Right. That, which makes sense. Right. It makes a lot of sense. A, a lot of relationships when young relationships, when there's a child involved, they don't make it the first year. Mm-hmm. It's statistically like a lot of young couples don't make it the first year with a child because everything changes the hormones, the postpartum, the fact that there's another life in the house, the fact mm-hmm. that there's no longer free time, um, the nagging and arguing and, Oh my God, it's your fucking turn. You don't get to sleep. Like right. there's a lot that plays into that and you can't prepare people for that. You can try, <laughs> you can try to tell people like, Hey, your life's about to change. Yeah. But until they experience that change, it, they think they know, but you got no idea. I remember my mom telling me, your yeah. life is about to change. And I was like, okay, I'm going to have a kid. Yeah, and, no big deal. <laughs> and my body changed. Yeah. My mental state changed. My hormones changed. Even now, you know, they're not even 10 yet. Yeah. My life is still going to change. Like mm-hmm. once they start hitting puberty, my life is going to change again. Well, your life is going to change again next year when one of them goes to regular school. Right. Like you're, you're going to be constantly going through... Yeah. Life changes because now it, you're you're not responsible for just keeping you alive anymore. Mm-hmm. I have to blow my nose. Okay. So I, I would start looking into how to process everything you went through with the postpartum because you said you're still going through it. It's been rough ever since. I can't imagine how hard that is on the husband. Yeah, it is. It you is know, hard on the husband. Seeing the woman that you love, it's his wife. Seeing your wife change like that and knowing there's absolutely nothing right. that you can do. To help her mental state, that shit's hard. Especially because most men are fixers. Right. We want to fix the problem. When you come to us, first thing that we do is try to fix the problem. Mm-hmm. Try to solve the puzzle. Yeah. Not listen to you vent and emotionally, you know, console you. Yeah. There are times now where I have to tell you, like, I'm not looking for a solution. I just need you to hear me vent. No, you have to tell me that almost every time. Because yeah. if you come to me, any kind of thing that I view as a problem, I'm trying to solve it. Right. And that's if something- you got a problem, yo, I'll solve it. <laughs> You know, that's something I took upon myself to start doing because I would notice I would get frustrated with you. Yeah. Because you're trying to give me all of these solutions. And you just want to vent. And I just wanted to vent. And I recognize to avoid the frustration on both of our ends because in turn of me getting frustrated, you're going to start to get frustrated Mm -hmm. because I'm just repeating myself to you. And you're like, I'm literally giving you the solution, but I don't want a solution. Yeah. It's so easy to avoid conflict. Yeah. We, we actually went through that, I think, twice. And it was a lot of back and forth. And finally, you were like, I, I feel like you're lecturing me. And I'm like, I'm just trying to help. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I remember that conversation. <laughs> I really did feel like I was being lectured. Crazy. Yeah. Um, you can be mad about it for a few days or laugh about it for a lifetime. Right. It sounds like you both miss each other because she said... I want him back. I want our old life back. And he said that he wants his wife back. Yeah. So y'all know what you want. You know what the end, you know what your end goal is. Have you implemented check-ins yet? Check-ins? Ne- yes, they need to happen. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. I would recommend this person check out our um, check report video. card video, yep. check-in video. Sit down with your husband and have him watch it and discuss how it makes you feel. I, I like sit down, watch that video together. Don't talk during it. Just absorb. And then once the video is over, 
discuss what you think it would do for you guys, what you yeah. want to implement, what you don't think would work. And find, then, find your own questions if you need to. Right. Get, and, a, get a fucking date night going, for God's sake. Like, it is not hard to spend two mm-hmm. hours a week together uninterrupted, even if that means the kid is there. You can take take the kid to a park. Mm-hmm. You can sit on the bench while they play on the playground and have an intimate conversation about life yeah. while the kids run and play. Mm-hmm. You don't have to go to dinner. You don't have to go to the movies. You don't have to go shopping. Mm-hmm. There are tons of free things that you can do while the kids are involved where you can watch them play at a distance and have time together. Yeah. It doesn't have to be sexual. You could do a family movie night where you guys are cuddling on the couch. Right. And it could absolutely happen after the kids go to bed. Right. Yeah. These emails are starting to make me depressed. Really? Yeah. Well, this next one's really going to get to you then. Oh, fantastic. I, you know, I'm getting better about separating myself from these emails because I hear these things and I know that I would never be in that position because I have expectations right. and I have, um, I have self-worth. My self-esteem sucks. Right. But, but I, the self-worth I, is there. But I know that I have value in life and mm-hmm. I know what I bring to the table. So knowing that... Um, I do bring a lot to the table. I won't accept anything less than the exact same thing from a partner. So like you bringing what you bring to the table balances my life. But if I was in a scenario like this and and we were just in a dating phase, Mm -hmm. I definitely wouldn't stay. Oh, no. And if we were in this situation 10 years from now where we've got this going on and all the intimacy is gone and we're two ships in a night passing, like I know that that's not sustainable. I don't... The and thing I, is, is that we wouldn't even get to that point. We would right. catch that shit immediately. There's right. times now where like where you're having a hard day or you're having like a hard week because of what you're going through on day three or four. I've actually done this and I would ask you, do you feel like things are changing between us? Right. And you would say, no, it's just I'm going through it. I just have to work through what I'm going through. Nothing is changing between right. us. I catch that shit yeah. because I don't want to end up in this point where we're roommates. I don't understand how it gets to this point. You guys got you guys remember the golden rule when you were in school? do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's not how it was worded to treat, me, but yeah. Treat, treat others the way you want to be treated. <laughs> right. I was going to continue with a whole bunch of the same phrase over and over again. And yeah. I was, you know, it, it's biblical. They teach you it in school. Right. They teach you it in life. And somewhere along the lines, we find partners and forget that. Treat your partner the way you want to be treated. Mm-hmm. Don't harp on them. Don't nag on them. Don't treat them like shit. Right. Treat them like you want to be treated. If you want to be loved, love your partner. Yeah. <clears throat> and if you if you go that route and you're giving them all the love, not saying just taking care of them and cleaning up after them and being the mom mm-hmm. because I know there's going to be some fucking asshole in the comments going, well, I did all that and he still left. Ugh. Well, you didn't do all that. Right. Because if you did all that and your life was perfect and you were being the perfect partner, they wouldn't have left. People don't leave people that they're happy with. Right. So look in the mirror, mm-hmm. make the adjustments that you need to make, course correct, and, and get your life back in order. Right. Men do it too. <sighs> But women, uh. that's how I fucking read those comments in Me my too. head. There's, um, at some point, uh. I want to make a short <laughs> about the TikTok that I made yesterday because that whole, it's not a fucking competition of who has it worse in the world. It's not. It's really not. And people want to make it that way. Yeah. They want to deflect. They, they want to deflect. They want right. to be like, oh, well, if they did it and we do it, it's okay. No, no, it's, it's not. not. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, it makes me so angry. We could we could do that today after we do this podcast. We okay. can take a break and have lunch and then do the thing. Okay. So <clears throat> is there anything else you want to say on this email? No. Nope, I'm done with that one because there wasn't a whole lot of information there. Yeah. And like I can I feel like I've exhausted all of my points in that. Okay. Um do you? Because now that you did that to me, somebody's gonna be like, I can't believe she did that. <laughs> she just that was just blatant. That was passive aggressive. <sighs> It's Do you abs- have anything of value to contribute to the conversation? <laughs> <laughs> I really feel like you're just nailing it. Like, well, that's how I see it in my head. When when I read comments like that, they just sound like the Swedish chef yeah. from the Muppets. Yeah. <laughs> for, for me, it's it's always Ace Ventura when he's got, got the Monopoly guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the last thing I would add, like I said, you guys already know what you want the end goal to be. Yeah. Now it's just to take the steps to get to that point. Yeah. And it's not arguing. It's not frustration. It's we both want this. How do we get to that? And it has to be open minded. Yeah. If your man tells you that you need to step your game up and you need to get to you need to get your mental health in order, you need to do that. Yeah. And if it's the kind of thing where you need to tell him like you're not handling the finances right, we can do it together. He needs to accept that. I'm curious if she actually has 
access to the finances because it's one thing to to let your man handle it completely and trust him to handle it completely. Mm-hmm. It's another to have access to it. Right. Like you trust me completely to handle everything and mm-hmm. I still gave you access to everything because I don't want to have to answer 800 questions. Right. Like you can just look and see. But I mean, I also don't just spend like I always tell you mm-hmm. what I'm doing before I do it. I don't ever just spend money like that. Not Nothing over like 500 bucks. Anything under $500 I'm just going to do because it's not that, you know, where we're at financially, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Like that loop deck today was like 140 bucks. Mm-hmm. I wasn't like, babe, I'm going to spend $140 on this device. Like I just mm-hmm. did. There's it. been a couple of times you spent money without telling me. Big money? Yeah. Like what? Like some extra stuff for your Jeep. I remember there was one day I walked to your computer and you're like, I just spent $6,000 on Jeep parts. And I'm like, you what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were still early on. I think anything that happened before year one is not relevant. Mm. It doesn't count. It's good to know we see things differently. <laughs> Get a mulligan on that. <laughs> Can I start over? Uh, that fucking Jeep. <laughs> I, was like, I loved it. it. Yeah, it was awesome it until did. it got eight miles of the gallon. I, it got us out of here for Hurricane Ian. It, it did. It really did. It was so fun driving that thing oh down the water. God. It was like driving it in a lake. I was having a panic attack the whole time. I was having fun. Oh, my God. That Jeep was lifted high yeah. and the water was still coming over the hood of it. Yeah. Like. <sighs> What an experience. Wild. I will never exp- oh, oh my god. That was a that was a moment for me. Yeah. Yeah. When we pulled up and the house was not destroyed and the water wasn't even touching the top of the driveway. Yeah. Uh, you hugged me and I was like, fuck. All right. So I did have AJ go through this and clean all this up so that it, it just reads. So I'm gonna read it and then there's there's bullet points. Um this is a new a new thing for us. So Um, It says, I am 44 years old. I lost my wife of 20 years when I was 39 years old. She was my wife of 20 years, but she was my lifelong friend. I met her when I was three months old, and she was two days old. So literally his entire life, he's known this person. Mm -hmm. We dated when we were 16, neither of us ever having been in another intimate relationship before. Our relationship bloomed, and we had our first child on the way when we were only 17 and second at 19. A quick turnaround for our third at 20 and got married when we were 18 years old. I was always the provider and she always supported me in my endeavors. From my first job to starting first business, using all of the $10,000 of savings, all the way up to when she passed, at which time we had six business, all in closely related areas and thriving. That usually meant long hours for me. We had a routine. I was home every night between 5.30 and 6. I would greet her first and have a quick two-minute rundown on how she was give kids hugs and shower. Depending on how her day was, I would give either, uh, I would give her 30 minutes to herself or help with whatever she needed. Finally, we would sit down as a family and have dinner. We talked about any problems or needs. Then it was our time together until bed. Her role uh, was, as you can guess, the traditional wife. She looked after kids, homeschooled them and took care of the house aside from repairs. Her role was as important as mine was. I'm going to pause there because that is our life. Mm Mm-hmm. Minus the loss, obviously. Right. I have said over and over and over again how important your role in the house and the things that you do is to me. And like having somebody else articulate that to me the way that I've been trying to articulate it to you validates everything that I've ever said. And I'm already relating to this email, right? Right. My well, uh, excuse me, my wife fell ill with what turned out to be an an inoperable brain tumor. The doctors gave her three months to live. I rarely left her side for those months. She showed her affection any way she could. She was strong while I panicked towards the end. She made me swear I wouldn't stay single. I protested. And she said she would haunt me if I didn't find someone in five years. Um, there were other things that were in this email that were removed because there was no way that I was going to be able to read that without crying. So I have the original email. If you want to read it later, you can. But like, mm. <clears throat> yeah, there's no way. Um, I was surviving. I'd say barely living. Honestly, per my late wife's wishes, I started dating someone. She had two kids of her own. We were dating for about six months and she lost her job. She asked if she could move on, uh, move in with me. I felt bad. And I said, yes, her Hmm. kids, um, her and her kids living with me. I had one condition. She had to sign a prenuptial agreement. She signed it. I bonded with her, uh, kids and I treated them like my own. I paid off all her debts and I bought her a new car. 18 months after she moved in, uh, she started to change, got lazy for back, uh, lack of better words. She was always out, um, like she was always out 
just leaving the kids with me. No amount of communicating I did could change this. So he would he would talk about it. It would last for a week, and then it would go right back to the way it was. Mm-hmm. Two years and <clears throat> two years and two days after she moved in, she breaks up with me, and she moves out the very same day. The next day, I get a letter from her lawyer saying that she wants half of everything. <laughs> I I try to be more than fair. Were they even married? Uh, it doesn't say they were married. I I don't. So he's not in the United States. I'm not going to say where he's from. Yeah. I don't know the laws in that country. Mm-hmm. I don't know if because they moved in together, it has like some sort of weird fucking like law where you guys are like assumed married because mm-hmm. I know they have a common law marriage in some states of the U.S. So I, I, I don't know how that works. But he she did sign paperwork saying that she wasn't entitled to shit. Right. Um, I tried to be more than fair and offered her half of all income, not money saved or asset growth, but half of all income earned during those two years. You're way better than I would have. I wouldn't Mm -mm. have offered her a fucking dime. Um, She took me to court three times. She argued with the judge that for those two years, only getting $870,000 was a hardship. $870,000 in two years. So $400,000 a year is a hardship? Luckily, the judge laughed at her. She actually ended up owing $50,000 in lawyer fees, and she got nothing. I love that. Other than the new car, jewelry, and clothing. (laughs) I almost lost all of what my late wife, late wife and I built together. This woman tried to take it. I would add that I told the judge to wipe the 50K. He said she owed me after all of this. I was not interested in making her and her kids destitute. Good word. Um, but she had to agree that if her kids wanted to contact me, see me, etc., she would not stop it. Her kids still ring me daily. I have agreed to continue paying for their education as none of this is their fault in the slightest. I'm a very logical thinker. And I like to be fair in everything that I do. The only reason that she got nothing was because she fought to get something she was not entitled to in my book, creating a lot of stress. This email, that what I just read is mm-hmm. very condensed from what he actually sent. And I went back and forth with him for a while when I got this email. Um, I like the format that AJ did with this, which mm-hmm. is going to make the bullet points that we're going to talk about a little easier. <clears throat> he wrote, so now for the question, simply... Uh, put how the heck am I to move on from all of this? I wouldn't try to date anybody. He is um, in the conversation that I had with him. Mm-hmm. He made it very clear that he promised his ex-wife, his late wife, I'm sorry, that he was going to move on. And within five years, he would have another committed relationship. So and I, she I, said, I, if she didn't, if he didn't have it, she was going to come back and haunt him. I think that's kind of fucked up. Uh, you'll, you'll, if I'm on my deathbed, I'm not going to give you a, dead like a what's the fucking word when some things do a deadline right i'm not going to give you a deadline on how when you, when you grieve when you move on when you're with somebody else i'm not going to do that to you right. i understand that <clears throat> this is one of those things that the the context of the email really matters and why right. we say things are one-sided if you read the rest of the email you you wouldn't feel like you're feeling right now you, you might probably a little bit because of the whole deadline thing I, I just think that it would change your perspective on it because you and i agree on almost everything and I, I, I don't think it would change my prescription. Really? Yes. If I were dying, I would not tell you in five years you need to move on. I would say I hope that you're able to grieve and process and one day you're able to find somebody else who makes you as happy as I do. But I'm not going to say in five years if you don't move on, I'm going to haunt your ass. Yeah. That, that bothers me a little bit because now this man feels pressure like I'm going to break a promise I made to my wife. I wouldn't do that. I, I can see that. You're right. I can see that. If, if, if I'm on my deathbed, I'm giving you an ultimatum. Your ult- <laughs> yeah. What's your ultimate? I have no idea because I'm not on my deathbed, but now that I know that that's going to bother you, I'm going to do it just so you, you think fucker. about me. <laughs> I want I want to be mem- remembered as long as I can. Why would you do that to me? Why not? Because I'm going to have to live like 30 years without you. That's yeah, not right. I don't know about all that. Don't do that to me. There's no guarantee that, you're good, that I'm going to go before you. Oh, man. Right. There's no guarantee in that. Yeah. I understand that I'm older than you, but that's only if I die of old age. Right. Men don't live as long as women anyways. Mm. But it's because we're more reckless and do higher danger jobs and right. are dumb. But there's no guarantee. Yeah. I want to clarify. I'm not pissed off at his late wife. No, I, I get that. I just, I, I think I, from from my perspective and my opinion on it, I think her giving that deadline put a lot of pressure on him. I agree with that. And he is, like, he was obsessed with her. They, ha- they built this life together and from in, birth. From birth. From birth, they built a life together. And it's very clear they loved, they respected each other. They had an amazing relationship. He's never going to find that again. No. And I hate to say that, 
That's a once in a lifetime relationship that's, right there. That's a once in like five or six generation relationship. Right. Like there's most people will never experience that kind of connection mm-hmm. with anyone. Because you have a lifelong bond with that person. Right. And that woman, like, I'm telling you, the things that I read in the email that I omitted from this, she was an incredible fucking person. Yeah. And you'll have to read it. It is gonna make you cry. I don't even want to talk about it because it's gonna make me cry. But that that I don't I don't know how to tell you how to move on, dude. Like I feel like I should have read that email before we did this. It, uh, it's a lot. It, it's a lot. This was the yeah. hardest email out of everything that we've gotten. This was the hardest one to read. Yeah, I feel like you have a lot of background information that I don't. Yeah. Should I even bother dating? Should I even bother trying to date again, considering the dating scene? My wife might haunt me if I don't. I know that that's kind of a, a joke thing. It right. could be a very serious thing for him because of his culture. I don't know. I, I don't. I, I don't. <laughs> I would rather drink bleach <laughs> if, than if, go back into the dating game. If I were this dude, I had this amazing ass relationship. I wouldn't try to seek it out again. I wouldn't try to seek somebody and try to date somebody. If it happens, it happens. Right. But. Like I had the great love of my life. I, do you do you really believe that? Do you think that you could just live alone forever if that was the case? Like, yeah, because you've told me that you think I'm home. So in the yeah, event that if, I passed in a year, mm-hmm. if anything happened to you, I'm done. You really believe that? Yeah, I do. Hmm. I'm not interested in anybody else. After what I've experienced with you, nothing is going to match up to that. I'm going to be constantly comparing them to you and the life that we had together. Why would I do that to myself? I've ruined you for other men. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I had to make light of the subject. I like that. I, I, I don't know. That's, you know, when you think about it, you can always what if scenarios as much mm. as you want, but that's that's a lot to process. And and in his scenario, I got to be honest, I kind of agree with you in that, you know, I, if I was to ever date again, if I was this dude, it would be one of those organic things that played out with us. Mm-hmm. But I had no intention of dating again. Yeah. Like after my divorce, I didn't want to be in a relationship and I definitely didn't want to get married again. I, I saw no value in it. Like, and then here I am. Right. But I, I still, I see the only value in marriage is companionship mm. and the covenant between me and God. Like, that's it for me. So everything that, that marriage provides, I can get on my own. I can do on my own. I don't need marriage for these things. And I have, I have money and I have success and I have all the cool shit that I want. So I don't need to share that with anyone. And I can share my my time with my friends and I can do these things and have fun. I don't need a mm-hmm. woman for that. You came along and I wanted you on my adventures and to to live my life with. So it's not the same thing. Obviously, it's not the same thing as this, but I got to be honest, dude, you had this fucking incredible life that they would make movies about. Like, this is some PS I love you shit. Like, you have have a life that literally belongs on Hallmark. Six, uh, Six successful businesses. Dude, that's hard to say. Six successful businesses. You nailed it. Ugh. Um financial stability, mm-hmm. an amazing life with one woman your entire life. Yeah. Like that's not, that is fucking unheard of. I've never heard of that before. No. And I love that for them. Like I I love that he was able to provide that life for her and he knew that she was happy and she was doing everything to make him happy. Yeah. That shit doesn't just happen. Like, nope. And I'm sure that they were, they had like tumultuous times where they didn't see eye to eye. Of course. And they still worked through that shit and they still had amazing times together. Mm-hmm. And, and what does it say about this man that he's willing to pay for these women's kids to go to college still and like pay right. for their schooling? He's obviously a good person. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on board with you on that. I, I don't think that you should look for it. I think that you should just let things organically evolve. And in the event that you find somebody and you really mesh with them and mm-hmm. you want to try to make things work, you can do like we did. Right. I will, I will push for our opening as much as I can, mm-hmm. because I've never had an opening the way that we did. I've never became as close to somebody as close as I came to you before we decided to start doing shit. It's it's always been, you know, I granted I, I am an 80s kid. Like mm-hmm. I remember life without Internet. But when the Internet became available in my space and Facebook dating changed, there was no longer, you know, playing the phone telephone game and like trying to, to spend a little bit of time and hook up and do all that shit. Everything became very fast paced. Mm-hmm. So most of the life is finding somebody fucking them and within a week going, yeah, I don't like that person and moving on. Like that's, you know, so uh, because of the success that you've had, I'm assuming that you're old, like I am, you know, in your forties. I'm pretty sure you said he's in his forties. Um, And forties, not old. (laughs) Shut the fuck up with that. I am. I am in my mid seventies, according (laughs) to YouTube. Uh, He's 44 years old. So yeah, he's, he's two years older than I am. He's middle aged. He's not He's in his prime. He's not old. He's in his prime. 
I'm in my prime. You are in your prime. I got I got another ten years before I, I can really start <laughs> calling myself old. Um, you think fifty is old? I do. I, I think that two hundred years ago, people weren't living past fifty years. Yeah. Our bodies and brains are not meant to live for a hundred years. You know what I mean? Like we're we're just not. And there's obviously all these new diseases and new problems that we have because of the food that we're eating and all mm-hmm. the shit that's going on. And even though people are living to be a hundred now, right. we're not meant to do that. So we are organic beings that right. start to decay after a certain point. Right. Time catches up with all of us. Um, his next question was, "How can I tell early on if someone is just trying to use me?" That's an all you thing. That is not an easy thing to do because people are are fake. Mm-hmm. They're very good at lying and manipulating. I would not disclose your financial stability to anyone in the event that somebody asks you what you do for a living and on, a, on a date, I would just tell them, I'm, I wouldn't even tell them that I would mm-hmm. be like, um, so, okay. <laughs> when you own a business, it's easier to put down that you're the general manager to get a car loan. Mm-hmm. So I would just tell them I'm a general manager at one of the businesses. They don't need to know what you do. They don't need to know that you're the owner. They don't need to know that you're CEO. Um, they don't need to know your finances in any way, shape or form. And mm-hmm. in the event that, that you're a well-known person, because you might be, um, Go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would be I would be very skeptical. That was one of the reasons why I didn't want to date again. It's why I, after my divorce, I said I wasn't going to get into a relationship. Told you that sh- several times. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to get into a relationship because I I don't trust women. I know the kind of money I make and I know how we're looked at. I'm I'm that guy. I'm si- well. I'm I'm not really six foot. I'm like five eleven, but I make the six figures a year and I have my own businesses and I own my own home and I have my own cars. So all the shit that women see on TikTok that they want, I'm that guy in terms of the statistics. Mm -hmm. Um, And when I hear people talk like that and they hear that those are the qualities that they want in a man, those aren't qualities. That is you looking for a man that can support you and use you so that Mm -hmm. you're basically, you got a sugar daddy. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. So when I ask a woman the qualities they seek in a man, I don't want to hear that he can provide. That's the last fucking thing that I want to hear. I want to hear, you know, oh, that he's funny or that, you know, he's a, could be a good father or he's marriage material. Like, I, I want to hear the things that are going to make me feel like the person that I'm interviewing because, you know, dates are interviews. Mm-hmm. And if you treat them as such, you know, you, you're a businessman, you're successful, treat them as an interview. Um, I want to know that the qualities that the woman that I'm talking to is is not financially based. I want to know that in the event that I didn't have any of this shit, would they still be sitting across the table talking to me? Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> what would you do in that scenario if you were if you were financially comfortable? Like, I don't want to say well off because I don't right. know his finances, but if he was willing to give this chick almost a million dollars for two years of her time, like he's definitely doing better in life than I am. Right. So, um, I would date within my tax bracket. How? But how do you do that? How? how I mean, I I agree with yeah. that. I fucking agree with that. Mm-hmm. Because then, then a prenuptial agreement is never going to be a problem. Right. You both have your own lawyers. Like there's, you know, if you that's that's the smartest thing I've heard on any of these podcasts. Yeah, yeah. Because and that's that's the answer. The that, problem that's is, what is I would do. how I do you would, find that person? Exclusive clubs. We have to pay your way in. You know, if somebody's making thirty thousand dollars a year, and it takes ten thousand dollars a year to be part of a club. Thirty thousand dollar people aren't right. going to be paying for that. Yeah, is that really a thing? Is that a thing that exists? Uh, I assume so elite clubs that only the rich can get into. Hmm. I would, you know, there's also dating apps now to where you have to enter in your tax information. Really? Yeah. Like if you, I'm so out of the loop. (laughs) If you make less than like six figures a year, you can't be on that dating app. Wow. Yeah. That makes me sick to my stomach. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously that's, it's good. Right. But like it, it does come, I guess, no, I guess maybe now that I think about it, it doesn't make me sick to my stomach because both parties have to make that. Right. Both parties have to be, somewhere above whatever minimum they have to be able to be on that app. Yeah, that's that I actually think that's a good idea. Yeah. I, when you first said that I thought that men have to be over that I'm like fuck no. that. Yeah, no. I obviously that was my own bias in my head cuz mm-hmm. all the shit I see on the internet. Mm-hmm. I dude, I would be honest with the type of person that I am, I would just stay single. Yeah. I I wouldn't try and then, I don't know if this man is spiritual. I don't know if he feels like he's breaking a promise to his late wife if he doesn't do that. And if that's how you feel about it, like then I would, I would talk to her. Yeah. I fully believe that souls are real and they're spirits. And once your body is dead, your soul is not. And you know, people can disagree with me on that, whatever. I've had my own experiences and right. 
I, I would speak out loud to the universe and just say, I know you told me you want me to do this. I just, I can't right now. And it's not that I'm disrespecting you or your wishes. I'm just mentally not in that place. Right. You know, there's a difference between moving on and, and dating. Right. You know what I mean? Like he he could get past that and be like, all right, I, I'm ready. And when mm-hmm. God or the universe puts that person in my life, I'm, I'll, I'll take that step. Right. But I can't put myself in a position where I'm going to go through what I just went through again just to try to make you happy. Right. Like, mm-hmm. That I, I think that's a good point, too. I, I think it's a shitty situation either way. And the more I think about the ultimatum thing on the five-year deadline, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I don't think that's fair. The more I think about that, like at the like time... That's her dying wish. Right. And at the, he wants at to the honor time, her that's how I wish. took it. Yeah. It was her dying wish. Like, all right, I'm going to get back on the horse. Like, she wants me to be happy. And that's how I took that. But the mm-hmm. more I think about it, like... What if it takes you 10 years to grieve me? What if it takes you that long to find a quality human being? Mm-hmm. Like... They've never been in the dating game. They've had each other their whole lives. And right. seeing the dating game and seeing what we see in the emails we get, like mm-hmm. it could take you five or ten years to find a quality person. And dude, no offense. No offense to you. You're a fucking solid dude. We've spent multiple emails back and forth, and I highly respect you as a man. But when you're in your 40s, finding a quality woman is not an easy thing to do. Women are coming with so much baggage. They're coming with ex-marriages. They're coming with alimony and child support and fucking you know past trauma and all the nonsense that comes along with it so finding women who are in their 40s and 50s who have not been you know completely just fucking ravaged by life is difficult i gotta be honest part of the thing that works so well for us is you don't have any of that uh, i do have that i'm just not bitter about it yeah but you don't have it to that level like you you really don't i i have seen some fucking really really spiteful women and that's just not who you are it's because they're bitter Right. spiteful women are bitter from experiences they've had in their life and they'd want to play the victim in it. Right. I don't do that. Right. I've had really shitty things happen to me. Right. But if you were that woman. Right. I, I wouldn't be here. Right. Then that's what I was getting at. Right. It, that's why I said it's a bitterness. Yeah. Do you have anything else on that bullet point on, on the use thing? Because that's. No. He's got more points here. Um, he said, how can I protect my wife? What can I protect what my wife and I built for our kids when a prenuptial can be contested so easily? Yes, prenuptial agreements can be contested. Um, they need to be written up by lawyers, and then they need to be addressed by lawyers, and mm-hmm. then signed in front of lawyers so that there can't you know it does make the contesting a little easily, um, uh, easier I guess, less easy. Um, protecting what you guys built is going to be one of those things where don't marry. I wouldn't marry. You know, you in 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 the states, mm-hmm. if you and I were just dating. And we built a whole bunch of life together and, and we broke up. You're not entitled to a fucking thing. I don't have to give you half my shit. You're not entitled to anything. If my car is on the note or my name is on the note for the car, we mm-hmm. have to figure that out. It's not guaranteed that you get the car. Like you can build a life with somebody and not be married to them and just sever ties and that's it. Mm-hmm. However, if you get married and you've only been together for six months, they have the ability to take half your shit. Um, obviously, you're not in the US. So you've made that clear, but... You know, I don't know how that works in your country. If you need a prenuptial agreement to be in a relationship with someone, that's a fucking problem. Yeah, Yeah, I I would never date again. I don't think I would either. I really don't. The risk of me losing everything that I've put my life into so Mm -hmm. that somebody could take it, fuck that. Right. I would, I would, I I passport, bro, that shit. Find another country where they've they've got people that just want to get a passport to where you live. (laughs) Green card. (laughs) I, I, uh... Like I said prior, I'm the type of person to where I don't need a companion. It's nice. Yeah. It's, like, I love spending my time with you. You're my best friend. It's a want. I If you died in a year from now, I would be content with living my life and doing the things that I enjoy. I would probably have, like, one of your finger bones or something and take it somewhere with me all the time. That's a little weird. I would do it. Why my fingers? You know, my mom had her pinky amputated and I asked for it and they wouldn't let me have it. Yeah, no, they yeah. wouldn't. But you I don't just know. deflected. Why my fingers? <laughs> I don't know. I have a fascination with the fingers. <sighs> I like the way the bones look. You could take my thigh bone and, and make like a, a buoy knife handle out of Ooh, it or something. I want your femur. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want the one that broke. Yeah. Yeah. With my right leg. That's the one I want. I um, Can you write that into your will? I mean, I, I don't know. If, I mean, actually, I know that Shannon Lorette from BME had written into his will that people could have parts of his. I want anatomy. your right femur. <laughs> Um, take you on adventures with me. <laughs> you can just put me in a necklace. Take me that way. I mean, I can still do that, but I. W- okay. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I don't, I, dude. I, I don't know about the prenuptial thing. I don't know. The, I don't know the laws in 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 the the part of the world that you live in. But I really feel like if just being in a relationship with somebody entitles them to your shit, then don't date. Mm-mm. It's not worth it. At, at that point, it's really not worth it. I would move to another country or get, like I said, get a passport and right. get married in the Dominican Republic or something mm-hmm. where or wherever your uh, country won't recognize marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know somebody that did that. They went and got married in a country that the U.S. doesn't recognize their yeah. marriage laws so that they could just break up if they needed to break up. I love that for them. Yeah, weird. All right. He said, I feel like I'm letting my wife down for the first time in my life by not fulfilling my promise to move on or be able to process, uh, I'm sorry, or being able to protect things the way that I thought I could, etc." I said a little bit ago that there's a difference from moving on and dating. Mm-hmm. You can you can move on from the loss of your woman and like be ready for that. I don't know if you're religious, you might be able to, you know, to to pray on it or whatever you need to do, but moving past the loss I think is more important than you dating somebody. Mm-hmm. And I think that's more what she wanted. Right. I don't think she meant it as an ultimatum like if you don't do this to me, you're going to break a promise to me. Right. She meant it as I don't want you to be miserable. Right. I want you to live your life. I want right. you to be happy. I really believe that. And because right. of what we read I don't think she realized that in her doing that, even though she had good intentions behind it, she just put a lot of pressure on this man. Yeah. And I that that's a very high emotional situation. You right. know, she knows she's going to die. You know, she's going to die. Both of you know your time is limited. So many things need to be said in a time frame that you just don't have anymore. Right. And she had good intentions. She doesn't want him to be miserable for the rest of his life, knowing that he's losing his wife. I don't know. Like you said, there's a difference between moving on and dating, forcing yourself out there because you want to keep a promise to your wife when you're not ready for that. Right. You're going to get yourself into a lot more situations like the one you just got out of. And uh, you were lucky to get out of that one. Unscathed. Right. That judge laughed in her face. Next time the judge might not do that. Right. I, you know, and, and that's a really good point. I think it's important to remember that if you start dating because you feel you're obligated to, you mm-hmm. will find yourself unhappy as fuck. Yeah. Because you're doing it because you feel obligated for your 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 wife. Mm-hmm. And I don't think she would want you to feel that way either. I from, don't think that she would want you to be unhappy at all. Right. From what we from the snippet that you read from the email, I, st- I haven't read this email. I right. don't know all of the background. Right. Um, she she wouldn't want that for you, mm-hmm. for you to fight to protect the things that you guys built together. Mm-mm. Yeah. And if that's, if that, if, like I said, if you feel like you might feel silly doing it, just speaking it to the air, but I promise you, if you say those things out loud and address her, like she's still here there, it's going to bring you a type of peace. Yeah. I, I I'm one of those people. Mm-hmm. I, I've lost a couple people in my life that I was very, very close to. And I talked to them a lot for probably the first two or three years after they passed. Yeah. Obviously, I don't anymore because I've I've You've gotten processed. over that and processed it all. But um, I don't think that that's an unhealthy thing mm. at all. I, I think that when you speak things out into the universe, it definitely matters. Yeah. It absolutely matters. Somebody's hearing it, right? This um this was a lot. So we're two hours, mm. right? And we've done three hour episodes. We can read that 187 stitch email if you want. Um, or we can end the podcast and do that as a separate thing. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I need to take a break. This was yeah, a lot. It was a lot. I, dude, I, I, I don't have a lot of people in life that I, I have not spent a lot of time with, like intimate time with, that I can say that I respect as a person. Mm-hmm. Um, but because of the back and forth that I've had with him and the way that he's handled his life and right. with this woman, like I have an immense amount of respect for this man. Mm-hmm. And I wish, I wish that I could actually spend like FaceTime with this dude, not not on the phone FaceTime, but like in face in person time with this dude. And just have conversations with him. Sit down and go to lunch. Like, I, I feel like, I, I got to be honest, I feel like there's a lot I could learn from him. You want to go on vacation? I would love to go there. Oh, my fucking God. Because I know where he is. Right. You've told me. I would cut my fucking pinky toe off to be able to visit that on whim. Mm-hmm. Um, bolt cutters. There would be your bone. Let's go. <laughs> you got to go to Iceland first. Okay. Black sand beaches. Um, but, you know, I also got to be honest, like, I would like to give this dude a hug. Mm-hmm. Reading this email kind of broke me a little bit. Yeah. I hate that he's going through it and and that a woman did him dirty like that. Yeah. Especially I, if she knows the background and he's opened up to her and she still pulled that shit. Right. I couldn't imagine spending my entire life, literally my entire life with one, one person mm-hmm. like, and that being it, like that was it. And then to lose them the way that he did. I don't know. It's a lot. And, um, yeah, I definitely, I would like to take a break because I, I can start to feel myself getting emotional. So, mm-hmm. 
You want to call it? Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.